Annual shows held by the various agricultural societies typify the Australian way of life. Whole cities have always come alive in anticipation of this major annual event. This is the 1937 Devonport Show in Tasmania. In the Grand Parade, along with all the farm animals, dogs are paraded. For decades, the rich agricultural societies in each state's capital city provided the administration and secretarial services for that state's pedigreed dogs, including keeping their dogs' stud books. At the annual show, the dogs were judged in one section, cattle in another, and so on. Today, the Royal Agricultural Show is still the largest dog show in each state. Agricultural shows have always provided a host of other entertainment. This was the first man in Australia to obtain a licence to keep a koala. So curiosities and sideshows are part of this scene. New farm machinery and cars are proudly displayed. Activities conducted at the annual show also include sheepdog trials and all kinds of horse events. Sailing ships that came to Australia two centuries ago carried small terriers to kill rats and mice on board. Some of these terriers were of early Dandy Dinmont type. There were also some with a background somewhat akin to the early terriers of Scotland. When these little dogs arrived in this unfamiliar land, they had to cope with snakes plus Australia's other indigenous animals. Vermin that had been introduced from Britain were also running rampant in this unsuspecting virgin country. Because of the job they performed, these poor little dogs were aligned with the vagrant ex-convicts that made up a significant number of Australia's early settlers. A century after Australia was settled, dog shows began. However, the Australian Terrier's attempt to gain official recognition was thwart with controversy. One of the leading Australian dog administrators a century ago wrote, The rough terrier is an unmitigated mongrel, only fit to use where snakes were too numerous to risk a dog of any value. We must be thankful that the Victorian Poultry and Dog Society has not allowed the name Australian to be prostituted to such vile uses and hung round the neck of a wretched mongrel. However, because the Australian Terrier developed an extremely loyal nature, his popularity grew and he eventually became recognised as Australia's National Terrier affectionately known as the Aussie. At first, his ears were allowed to be either erect or dropped. When erect, incorrect large ears, shaped like those of a bat, were sometimes seen. The ruff around his neck was developed to protect his throat and ears from snakes and other vermin he was originally bred to hunt. 
the rough adds to his hard-bitten, rugged appearance. The only colours of the Aussie are similar to those of the Dandy Dinmont, essentially blue and tan or sandy. The Aussie has an elongated head with a strong muzzle equal in length to that of the skull. The soft top knot is retained from his Dandy Dinmont ancestry. His harsh coat should never be trimmed and should only be about two and a half inches long. The Aussie is a sturdy, low-set dog whose strong body is rather long in proportion to his height. He has strong hindquarters, which gives him a springy but true and forceful action. Although the Aussie is essentially a working terrier, his even disposition makes him an ideal companion for all ages. Australian society demanded a companion dog whose coat was softer to fondle than the harsh hair of the Aussie. So, for over half a century, the Aussie was crossed with the Yorkshire Terrier, creating the Australian Silky Terrier, usually referred to as the Silky. In fact, for over 60 years, all three breeds could be registered from the same litter. At this time, the Yorkshire Terrier was already well established in the north of England as a toy terrier. His silky coat made him a great favourite in England as a pet. Today the Yorkie is characterised by his magnificent dark steel blue coat. The chest, legs and head are a rich golden tan, which is shaded lighter at the tips than the roots. He is a small toy breed with a rather small head and a muzzle that is not too long. The Silky Terrier has a muzzle slightly shorter than the skull. The Silky also has a flat glossy silky coat which should only be five to six inches long. The silky retains the top knot of the dandy and Aussie but only comes in blue and tan. Although the silky is a toy breed with a well-groomed appearance and refined structure, he has sufficient substance to suggest the ability to hunt and kill domestic rodents. The Australian Silky Terrier can also hold his own with any other breed of dog when competing in dog sports. This is Flyball. A fun activity enjoyed not only by dogs of every description, but also by a wide variety of handlers. Flyball is a relay race consisting of heats, each running four dogs. Each dog must hurdle four jumps in succession trigger the box and return over all four jumps with the ball in its mouth. If the next dog starts before the preceding dog has reached the start-finish line or does not take every jump 
or takes the ball directly from the cup or does not trigger the box or does not return with the ball in its mouth, that dog must run again. At least four teams compete in a competition. Each race has heats. The best three out of five heats is the winner. This continues until there is one winning team. Dogs can also gain flyball titles. Points are earned by every dog in a team which clocks up less than a particular time in a heat. The quicker the time, the higher the points. Some participants take flyball very seriously. But for the dogs and spectators, it is all great fun. Hence, flyball is a sport which is gaining in popularity by leaps and bounds.